In this chapter, we're going to learn how to use the Ruby debugger and use it to find logical errors in our program. Debuggers aren't used to find syntactical errors. The interpreter does that for you. But we'll use the debugger when our program does not give us the output that we expect it to give us. I should warn you on the front end that debugging is as much an art as it is a science. So a lot of what you learn about debugging comes from experience and intuition. The best way to become a good debugger is to simply have a lot of experience as a programmer, and by default, you will become a better debugger. Maybe not an expert debugger, but certainly better. So though there is a lot of art to debugging, I can teach you about some of the tools that the Ruby debugger uses. And that's what we're going to be doing mostly in this chapter. Although here and there, I'll give you some advice to help with debugging. In this first lesson, we're going to simply look at how to call the debugger, how to use it to list the lines of a program, and then how to use it to step through a program line by line. So let's get started by writing a simple program. We're going to call it debug1.rb. We're going to create a list of five numbers. And then we're going to have a for loop, loop through the list, and display the number and its square. Like so. So let's save the program and then run it one time without the debugger. Let's make one change to that. Let's use print instead of put s. And I always like to put print statements in parentheses. Let's run it again. Now, the output's not perfect, but we'll come back to that later. What I want to demonstrate now is how to use the debugger. The way we use the debugger is by setting what's called a require switch. And that require switch will be the actual debug program. The way we call that is like so. Ruby, then a space, and then a dash R. The dash R represents the require switch. And then we tell it we want to require the debugger, or debug followed by the name of the program. And when it does that, it takes us right into the program and displays the first line. So taking a look at the line, if we want to see the rest of the program, all we have to do is type L. So notice this is like an interactive shell. We can enter commands and the debugger will respond. So L lists out the lines of the program with the line number to let us know which line is which. If we had many lines, it would list a few lines and then pause. Let us hit L again to display more so that it wouldn't just list the whole program at one time. Now the next thing we might want to do is step through the program to see how it executes. We'll do this again later with a breakpoint to see how a program runs up to a breakpoint. And we'll also do this again and watch the values of variables as they change. But for now, let's just step through the program line by line. That command is in. So we type an in and hit enter. And it takes us to the second line. In again, takes us to the third line. Notice that it also displayed the output to the left of the debug prompt. So we do it again. We get the second set of output, two and four. Then hit in again, three and nine. In again, four and 16. In again, to give us five and 25, and then it stops the program. So using this stepper, if you want to call it that, you can watch a program execute line by line, which is one useful way to figure out why your program isn't working the way it's supposed to. Or you can use the stepper or stepping through a program as a teaching tool to understand exactly how the control of flow of a program works. But with that, we're ready to move on to the next lesson where we're going to look at how to set a breakpoint. A breakpoint is a place in the program that's marked. And when execution gets to that line, then the program will stop so that you can investigate the value of variables or just the state of the program at that point before you go on and execute more lines. And we'll see how to set breakpoints in the next lesson.